So Farouk was just neither downstream from one federal and two state Superfund sites. And after that was discovered, it was a, a Mohawk midwife named Gudji Cook, whose concerns really became around were the PCBs that were found to be leaching out of the General Motors plant getting into the fish that everybody had been eating forever? And if that was the case, was it also getting into the breast milk? Other health studies had been done in the community and the information had not been relayed back. It was kind of the old school styles of health studies where they come, they collect your fat, they collect your blood, and you never hear from anybody again. And she said, this is not how it's going to be done this time. We need this information. But the only way you're going to get you know, breast milk from women is if Mohawk women are trained to collect that information. So instead of you know, grad students in lab coats going out and, and collecting these samples and this data, it was Mohawk women who were trained how to do that. Then also, when you look at all the research papers that were published out of the work that Akwazesni Mohawks did with SUNY Albany and the, the New York State Department of Health, there were Mohawk co-authors on those papers, and that was important as well to kind of show that there had been this input in the data collection and analysis. But then also thinking about are there creative ways of conveying information back to people that go beyond just, here's your individual letter, here's how many parts per million PCBs you have in your blood. And some of the things people were talking about is, how do you have family meetings? How do you have kind of these group meetings where you then can bring in a researcher to talk to smaller groups of people to ask questions to make it more of a, a back and forth type of conversation. And some of those models of kind of these you know, family meeting, group meetings have since been applied to other programs that are listening. like there's a centering pregnancy program where women can come together and um, work with each other through the birthing process. And this Azajitawadu, this Akwazesne cultural restoration program, where then um, some people were hired as mentors and apprentices in uh, fishing and horticulture and traditional medicines and trapping and some of these skills that people were worried that information hadn't been conveyed over the years because of people's concerns about contamination. And so people were then coming together to learn in groups and learning language at the same time that they were learning farming and gardening and these other kinds of um, skills. And so part of it is about how do you learn as a group, teach as a group, convey information, being in constant communication with the community about what kind of information they want collected. And to keep in mind that you know, there's 500 plus different tribes and people have different customs and beliefs and understandings of what kind of information should be collected or shouldn't and by whom and who should have access to different information. And that's going to be really different in different places and so not assuming that from one community to the next people are going to have the same beliefs about what information is okay to collect.